Okay, so here are some uh, possible tasks and activities relatively easy to create that might be good uses of the interactive whiteboard in an ESL classroom. So I've listed these, you can walk through these. The thing to keep in mind is that when you click your button on the screen, it's acting like a right, or sorry, a left mouse click, the basic mouse click in that location. Um, you can pull up a topic that may be of interest or related to something you're studying. I just did a search for Ohio or a, a political uh, story. And uh, here it's a story about John McCain. And you can have the students take the pen, come up, and find a structure that you've been studying and highlight it. So uh, class, has anyone seen any adjective clauses? Well, sure, there's one right here. And you can highlight it. So if there are different things you want them to find in a text, I mean, this could be any text on the internet anywhere, and they could highlight words, double click, or a longer passage if necessary. But uh, something, for example, with adjective order, uh, you give your students a list of adjectives, a couple of sentences, like my teacher is a man, your teacher is a woman, and have the students come up and drag and drop the adjectives in the appropriate order for each sentence. So my teacher is a, what would you like to make in the sentence? Handsome. Handsome. Ugly Canadian. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we have any of those here. But if you, if you double click to highlight the word and then use your mouse to drag it, you could say, uh, handsome, oh, you can see, uh-oh, class, wrong order. And you could move it. It's not handsome a man, it's a handsome man. Now, I think Microsoft Word usually inserts the spaces. Um, WordPad doesn't. Um, but you, you get the idea of how you can drag and drop words. Uh, maybe a big, big handsome man. And so on like this. So it's possible to interact with, uh, with a text document. Um, but there may be even better ways to interact with Um, Hot Potatoes, some of you might be familiar with. It's a way to create web pages that, um, <laughs> even if you don't know how to create web pages, you basically insert the content and it creates the page for you. So some examples um, I've made are a matching exercise. So match the items on the right to the items on the left. So match the school to its nickname. So you can have students. Uh, we have Ohio State, Wisconsin, Michigan State, Michigan, Spartans, Buckeyes, Wolverines, Badgers. So your student takes the Buckeyes and drops it over here on Ohio State. You pick the Spartans, and I think that's Wisconsin. Your student's a little new to the area. Don't worry. Wolverines, we know that's Michigan. Grr. And we take our Badgers over to Michigan State. We check the answer. 50%. Uh-oh, problem. We say OK. We switch the, switch the two that are incorrect. And you drag and drop and match. When we check, we've done much better. So this is a really easy program for setting all this up. All I typed in was the school names and the nicknames. The software makes the web page for you. So kind of a nice feature. Looking maybe at adjective word order, you can grab these and drag them around. It's kind of like refrigerator magnet poetry. So what's the sentence uh, we want to make with these words and period? Anyone? Give you a clue the subject is Ohio. So we take Ohio, we drag it up here. Ohio is. Is, very good. Okay. You must teach pretty advanced grammar, Kathy, to be able to pick up the verb so quickly like that. That's amazing. We can grab it. Ohio is, thanks to Kathy Moon, we know the verb. Uh, next, ah. Uh, very good. Matt doesn't even teach English, but he knows that much. Right. <laughs> but he speaks it. So. He speaks it pretty good. Uh, now, adjective word order. We know it's going to be a state. Now let's say um, we make American beautiful big state. Don't forget your period. Punctuation is key. And you think, well, we put the adjectives in front of the noun. What do we think? We check it. And it says, well, you have Ohio is a, but some of the words are out of order. You can click on OK. And then this, um, can another student come up to the board? Sure, no problem. You can drag and drop. Uh, Check there, and boom, you got the right answer. So you can you can have the students come up and manipulate the text. 
um, and within hot potatoes, it's really easy to create these kinds of activities. Um, so a little easier than the Word document because you don't have to highlight and this kind of stuff. You're just dragging around little fridge magnet uh, jobbies. <laughs> you, can, you can follow the street. You can see the street is mapped. So if you want to go one unit north, you click on the arrow, which I think I might have done, and it moves you north to the next shot or the next frame facing that direction. Kind of cool. But you can also manipulate this in 360 degrees. If you grab it with your mouse, you can spin it this way. And we can look at ARPS Hall. Just like that. I believe in the fall. Yeah, it's last fall. Nice. Judging by pictures of my house, last fall. Um, and you can say, well, I want to go a little bit further north and look at that uh, lovely uh, unnamed artwork on ARPS. And you can sort of move progressively up and down the streets this way. Um, there's a bit of processing time for the camera to come into focus and stuff. But again, you can take it with your mouse, or in my case, my infrared LED pen, and you can move it around and you can look up and down and all these kind of things. There's a bit of lag for us, but really kind of a neat way to interact with this sort of 360 degree, degree view of um, your neighborhood. And here we have our six letters. So we can see there are this many three-letter words, four-letter words, five-letter words, six-letter words in the Yahoo dictionary. So what you want to do now is, can anyone make a three, four, five, or six-letter word from the letters we've been given? Doubt. D-O-U-D-T. Enter. Hey! Not bad. There's a longer one. Uh, we could do but. Dog. Any more? Sorry? Out. 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 Now, the reason it's called text twist is because if you're out of ideas, you hit twist. Ah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, we can see bit and so on. You can play on and on and on. It's a lot of fun, but again, it's all mouse, so you can have students come up to the board, find a word, click, 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 yeah. have students help each other as Jesse helped me, um, and so on and so on. So you get your time limit, and uh, not a word. Outbid. This is something else I found, which was created by an ESL teacher, I believe, in Germany. Um, but it's a student-created story. So students took all of the pictures and students wrote the story, and it's kind of a choose-your-own-adventure story. I don't know if you're familiar with these books where you read a couple pages and says, do you want to do this or do you want to do that? Turn to this page, turn to that page. So every time you read the book, it's a different story. This is the premise. So the students wrote the initial concept, and then these two, and these two, and so on. had this branching pattern for this whole story. So it's actually pretty involved. The nice thing, again, it's all mouse-based. So uh, it's Monday, Gretel is waiting for Hansel in front of the school building, da 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 Do we want to make it a love story? Do we want to make it a detective, detective story? Detective. So we click on detective, and then we see the detective version of the next series of events. In the hallway they meet Tony, they go to the secretary. Do we want to continue with Max or Moritz? Maybe Max. And so on and so on. Here's our detective story, a crime scene, and so on and so on. Um, so if we scroll down a little bit, we can go Sherlock Holmes or Inspector Colombo and so on and so on and so on. So again, anything that's, that's mouse clicks, boom, really easy to do. You can have students come up and, what do you want to do next? What have you. What is better than bubble wrap? <laughs> Get your pen and just like, ah. <laughs> I feel the tension leaving my body as I pop. The bubbles. In conclusion, uh, it's, a, it's a neat technology. There's still some stuff to figure out in terms of why and how to use it in the classroom. But um, because we were able to, hey, 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 sorry. Because this, this, uh, this technology makes it so cheap, the $40 uh, remote control of the camera, $5 worth of Radio Shack parts, and your Bluetooth-enabled computer and projector, oftentimes we already have those, we can put a lot more of these in teachers' hands and get them using them a lot more and seeing uh, best practices for this technology.